Good day. When driving on certain roads in Ratchaburi, you will notice yellow markers, white and red kilometer signs, and stations with white piping and a telecommunication tower. These are pipeline markers and pipeline gas block valve stations. For example, in Ratchaburi, block valve stations 10 and 12 are visible from the roads, as well as the entrance of the large PTT operation and maintenance center directly located on Highway 4. Similarly, on the way to Kanchanaburi Sai Yoke on Road 323 and other roads in this province, you will also notice yellow markers, white and red kilometer signs, and stations with white piping and a telecommunication tower. All of those things belong to the Yadana gas pipeline system. When one is continuing from Road 323 to Ban Itong you have to use from Tong Pa Pum the small mountain Road 3072 which reveals grandiose panoramas, is framed by colorful large flowers. Ban Itong, which is a pretty charming village in the mountains near the Thai Myanmar border, one will see as well a station on the right side with some large white painted piping. This is block valve station number 1 belonging to the Adana gas pipeline. 350 meters up from this station towards the Thai Burma border is the almost famous pipeline kilometer point zero located directly at the Nern Sa Thong viewpoint, where the Thai section of the Adana gas pipeline begins. From this viewpoint, one can look over to Burma, where the Adana pipe stretches as a color recognizable path through the forests to the Andaman Sea. The to Thailand belonging 42 inch pipeline has been supplying gas since September 1998. All those visible objects from the Yadana gas pipeline were built by the Tasco Manasman joint venture in 1997-98. Tasco Manasman joint venture provided PTT with a high-quality reliable pipeline system. The pipeline owner PTT also maintains the pipeline in good form as it just can be seen on the good-looking stations and pipeline markers. Throughout the entire construction period of the gas pipeline between 1997 and 1998 Thai newspapers and television were constantly filled with negative reports about the project, many of which were mixed with fake news. The pipeline was simply not well received in the media. However, despite this negative portrayal, the majority of people in Ratchaburi and Kanchanaburi remained neutral or had a positive view of the pipeline. PTT, with the assistance of their engineering company Nova Gas OGP, was responsible for the entire route selection of the Yadana pipeline. The Tasco Manasman joint venture had no involvement in this decision. The pipeline route twisted through the high mountains in natural virgin forest ran through agriculture fields, and along roads following the natural contours of the land. To accommodate these changes in direction and elevation, the 42-inch pipes had to be bent using heavy bending machines with internal mandrels, creating what are known as field bends. These field bends allowed the pipes to conform to the shape of the excavated ditch and the surrounding topography. In some areas, where the curves were particularly tight and the elevation changes were significant, we used over 80 factory-made hot bends supplied by us the Tasco Manasman joint venture. Here in this video, I want to share some general information about the gas pipeline system and describe its locations together with many accompanying pictures showcasing how the pipelines look now in our time. How I can do this? I was the former project director of the Tasco Manasman joint venture and was responsible for building this pipeline. The pipeline is designed to have a 40-year lifespan, which aligns with PTT's other pipeline systems. Initially, the pipeline operated at a pressure of 86 bar and had a gas flow rate of 800 million standard cubic feet per day. I'm not aware of the current operating pressure that PTT uses now, but I can tell you that we tested the pipeline with a test pressure of more than 150 bar holding it for 24 hours during our hydro test. This was a very high test pressure that was used and the 240 kilometer long pipeline passed the test. The pipeline begins in Ban Itong and ends at Ratchaburi's power station with a diameter of 42 inches and stretches almost 240 kilometers through the provinces of Kanchanaburi and Ratchaburi. It comprises a total of 12 block valve stations, including six scrapers, an operations and maintenance center, a gas meter station, and a SCADA telecommunications system that was linked by us to the existing SCADA system of the Petroleum Authority of Thailand in 1998. As mentioned before, in the province of Kanchanaburi, in the district of Tong Pa Pum, there is a small former mining village called Banitong. 
It is located in a forested mountain area with striking emerald green karst blocks that form a mountain range along the border with Burma. This is the point where the Yadana gas pipeline from the Thai Myanmar border first connects with the 36 inch Yadana Myanmar gas pipeline at kilometer zero. We, the Tasco Manasman joint venture, have made this pipe connection on the 24th of June, 1998, as shown in the picture. The large red brown marble made memorial plate located close to the pipeline trench where we made the pipe connection reads in both languages, Forever Friendship Thai Myanmar. So, we fulfilled our part of this friendship promise statement by connecting the two pipelines. From this point which has an elevation of around 900 meters, the 36-inch pipeline runs down south for 350 meters to block valve station number 1, where the Yadana pipeline increases its pipe diameter to 42 inches. Block valve station 1 is also the connecting point for two other gas pipelines coming from Myanmar, namely the Yetagun and the Sadika pipelines, which connect here to the Yadana pipeline. The station is equipped with a launching scraper unit that goes when a pipeline cleaning scraper pig or intelligent pig is launched to the 123 km far away block valve station 7 which is now named Sai Yoke Compressor Station. Assuming a gas speed of 30 km per hour the scraper pig would travel 4 hours to the Sai Yoke base station. The Yadana gas 42-inch pipeline delivers about 25% of Thailand's natural gas demand. From block valve 1, it then leaves the station as a 42-inch diameter gas pipeline including a fiber optic cable protected in a conduit going east, passing on below the north side of the village of Ban Itong, and climbing over steep mountains starting at pipeline kilometer 2 with challenging conditions. To overcome this steep hill, we employed special construction techniques and used a cable crane for the pipe installation. Let me just say for completeness that at pipeline kilometer 1.9 we did the first water crossing at the creek coming from the Yoke Kraton waterfall. Until the end of the pipeline at Ratchaburi, we had in total 92 water body crossings. During the dry season, most of the water body carried little water but this changed dramatically during the rainy season. At pipeline kilometer 3.7 the 42 inch the Yadana gas pipeline makes its first road crossing on road 3072. Most of the visitors driving to Ban Itong do not realize that they are passing over a large diameter pipeline. Until the end of the pipeline at Ratchaburi, we had in total of 70 official road crossings. But we had many more road crossings when considering the private land. The pipeline then continues through the mountains, passing Somsak mining in a distance of 1.1 kilometers and reaching mountain heights of up to 930 meters to the southeast in a beautiful natural environment. It's worth mentioning that we used Somsak Mining as an accommodation place for our construction crew during the period of 1997 to 1998. The pipeline then continuously its winding way through the mountain. It comes to the steep hill at pipeline kilometer 15. There we used a cable crane for the pipe laying due to the tremendous steepness of the hill. Subsequently, it approaches the 3.5 km far away block valve station 2 located at pipeline kilometer 18.5. Block valve station 2 has an elevation of 850 meters. This station is very remotely located and on the entire pipeline the most difficult station to reach. Due to its remoteness, there was no public power supply and the station was equipped with a thermogenerator to produce its own electricity. As shown here in the nice construction picture from May 1998 the 42-inch pipeline is leaving station 2 in the east direction. For completeness, I would like to mention that the Yadana gas pipeline runs very close parallel to the border with Myanmar for the first 20 kilometers. The 42-inch pipeline continues its journey through some of the most challenging conditions imaginable, including 40-degree slopes with over an 850-meter elevation in rugged terrain. The 42-inch pipeline runs up to a cliff on a mountain at pipeline kilometer 20 where it had to climb sharply. In this extremely harsh environment, we also used a cable crane and special measures for pipe laying. See here too the details in my video The Deep Jungle. The pipeline goes after this for 6 kilometers through Thailand's Hoi Kaiang National Forest Reserve. This is the high elevation area of the pipeline on the upper part of the mountain section with steep slopes, valleys, and some cliffs. Since there are wild elephants and tigers in this forest area it is not recommended to do any hiking along this pipeline stretch because one could get killed by those wild animals. 
At pipeline kilometer 26.5, this is the place named Jungle Garden the pipeline leaves the classified watershed number one forest area. The elevation here at the top of the slope is around 430 meters with a length of 310 meters. It goes down to an elevation of around 250 meters until the river. For information, there was no water body crossing in the 6 kilometer long class 1 watershed forest from pipeline kilometers 20.5 through 26.5. The water body crossing started again at the bottom of this steep slope at pipeline kilometer 27 where the creek called Pascamai flows. As shown in the picture we used a large pipe to bypass the water flow of the river and we could install the crossing in a dry ditch. It's crucial to note that the steep mountainside at pipeline kilometer 27 served as the main access and logistic point for all work activities in the 6 kilometer long mountain section of the watershed 1 pipeline stretch. This area was particularly challenging to access, and all supplies and equipment had to be transported up this slope to reach this part of the site. For transport activities, we had to use a cable crane as well. The 42-inch pipeline then continues its way in the south and goes to kilometer point 28. This is the part forest area where at the beginning of 1998 Sulik Sivaraksa, a prominent activist, and his NGO people had their camp erected and blocked for months the entire pipeline construction. Due to the blockade, we were unable to reach pipeline kilometer point 27, thereby preventing access to the pipeline section starting at kilometer 20. This blockade was cleared by the Thai government on the 6th of March, 1998 after the Prime Minister decided that the pipeline had to be built. By the way, if someone loves the jungle and adventures in peaceful quiet nature, this is an area where one can erect a tent and do some camping. But please keep in mind the wildlife that could be dangerous and there is no shop such as 7-Eleven close by. I have to say that the entire area between pipeline kilometer 28 through 55 where the pipeline is located has many roller coaster like mountain sections with a lot of rock embedded in red earth and it was a quite challenging area for construction and this included alone 26 water body crossings up to block valve station number 4. Now the pipeline is reaching block valve station 3 located at pipeline kilometer 35.7 which has an elevation of around 300 meters close to a village called Ban Rai Par. As one can see in the construction picture from May 1998 at block valve 3 the 42-inch valve with its blue actuator and the vent piping system was already installed at this time surrounded by the typical red earth present in this area. I revisited the station in February 2019. PTT's guard a former TMJV employee told me that the area very close to the station is quite often visited by a herd of wild elephants and this is not a very pleasant feeling. In addition, one of our former motorcycle scouts, Harry, reported about his previous work on our pipeline in this area 12 years later he revisited the site in a motorcycle magazine. He mentioned the presence of tigers in the area and noted that they could be recognized by their extremely strong, penetrating smell. My comment on this, you are definitely not alone in the deep Tong Pa Pung jungle. The next target for the pipeline, approximately 25 kilometers further southeast, is block valve station number 4. Before reaching block valve station number 4, the mountain elevation increases to around 554 meters at pipeline kilometer 45. This area is also characterized by a rocky and harsh environment. Continuing from here another 16 kilometers we will reach block valve station number 4 at pipeline kilometer 60.5 in the middle of an agriculture field in the Sai Yoke area. This block valve station number 4 has an elevation of around 100 meters. The entire surrounding area has agricultural activities with a lot of rubber plantations. During our pipeline construction in the years 1997 to 1998, those plantations in the entire area did not exist. After leaving block valve number 4, the pipeline continues southeast for about 7 kilometers. At kilometer point 67.8, it turns eastward and approaches the river Kwai Noi at pipeline kilometer 68. At kilometer 68, the 42-inch pipeline crosses the river Kwai Noi covered in a heavy concrete coating. We used the open-cut wet ditch crossings method and installed a 100-meter long concrete-coated 145-ton heavy siphon 1 meter below the river bed where it has been safely sitting for more than 26 years already. Due to the short time, we had available the work was challenging, 
but we successfully did it and reinstated the river embankments perfectly, as shown here in the river picture. Our beautiful restoration work done in 1998 suppresses the presence of a 42-inch pipeline. People who see this area do not think that there is a major pipeline crossing. For more details see here my video River Kwai Crossings. Here in between I have to tell you that our Sai Yoke construction camp was located around 2 kilometers from here in the north on Highway 323 and it was quite a big camp as the picture shows it. Today there is at this place the Sai Yoke Subdistrict Municipality at home. After exiting the river, the pipeline runs east for 2 kilometers, passing through agricultural fields until it reaches Highway 323. The photo depicts pipeline marker kilometer point 70, which is located behind bushes and trees. This marker is the first one along the highway. The pipeline joins the highway between the road marker stones 156 and 157 at this point. At Highway 323, the 42-inch pipeline changes direction and heads south. Along the entire length of the highway, the buried pipeline is covered with a minimum of 1.5 meters of earth, and concrete slabs have been used as well to protect it. The pipeline runs parallel to the west side in the road corridor, passing a what called Sai Yak Jai after 500 meters. At that time when we built the pipeline, the big building of this what was under construction. We encountered many complaints and stoppages due to the vibrations caused by our heavy excavators rock hammers and dozers during rock removal in the ditch and surrounding area. Rock blasting wasn't possible due to the nearby buildings. We later used a heavy rock trencher to cut the rock out and laid down the 42-inch pipe string, but progress was very slow but it got of course finished. The pipeline continues its way to pipeline kilometer point 71, the entrance road to the Sai Yoke National Park where the well-known waterfall is located. Our road crossing work on this entrance road was done by the open cut method. Regarding the waterfall, I must say that it is beautiful, but during the dry season sometimes, the waterfall has just no water. In this area, many new small shops, restaurants, and houses or lodgings have been erected almost on top of the pipeline. Compared to the time between 1997 and 1998 when we built the pipeline, I have to say that there are many more buildings existing now. On the west side of the road, where the construction corridor of the Yadana pipeline used to be, we removed a lot of earth and rock. In the picture shown here, one can see the tremendous amount of rock we had to remove. This was the case throughout the entire Sai Yoke area. Now, many trees and scrub are growing there. From this point, the pipeline runs for 4.5 kilometers to block valve station number 5, which is directly located at road 323, at pipeline kilometer 81.7. The distance between block valve station number 4 and 5 is 21.2 kilometers. Now we have reached block valve station number 5. Let me please just inform you what we have installed in this valve station. Here like in all the other Yadana pipeline block valve stations, we have a control and a guard room in the station building. Of course, the major installation is the 42-inch pressure class 600-pound top entry ball valve which is installed underground in the station to isolate sections of the pipeline for safety reasons. In all 12 block valve stations, the valves are installed with a gas over hydraulic valve actuator. Gas over hydraulic actuators are used with high pressure gas supplied from the pipeline suspended above a hydraulic fluid to move the mechanics of the actuator. All the 42-inch block valves are buried except for block valve station number 1. In the unlikely event of a pipeline rupture, the damaged pipeline section will be isolated by closing off the valves on either side of the rupture location. The installed 12-inch piping with a vent stack disposal system will be used to collect and discharge gas via a pipeline bypass into the atmosphere after normal pipeline operations have been stopped. I have to mention here as well that some stations had a gas outlet piping for other PTT's customers. Additionally, to say is that the block valve can be closed for maintenance and repair as well. A fiber optic cable was laid down with the pipeline and was designed for a minimum service life of 40 years same as the pipeline as stated before. The installed SCADA and telecommunication systems are redundant. In addition, at each station, a telecommunication tower with very high frequency, 14 VHF, was installed as a backup for the system. 
The entire pipeline operation is automatically controlled by the aforementioned supervisory control and data acquisition called SCADA system. It includes a PBX system which is a private telephone network used within PTT's organization to allow internal communication and connection to the public switch telephone network. Now the pipeline is leaving block valve station number 5 and continuing its way in the south direction. Before the pipeline reaches its next well-known location object here on Highway 323, I have to inform you about the material quality of the pipes installed in the Yadana gas pipeline. The pipes used were API 5L grade X65 longitudinal submerged arc welded with some special material requirements specified by PTT and their engineer Nova Gas OGP. The majority of pipes were manufactured in Japan. The isolation coating of those pipes with fusion bonded epoxy coating was done locally in Thailand. What is an API 5L X65 line pipe? API 5L grade X65 is a standard specified for gas, oil, and water steel pipes by the American Petroleum Institute. This pipe X65 is a high yield material meant for gas transportation over distance pipelines. The ferrite perlite steel material has a minimum yield strength of 65,000 psi or 450 megapascal and a minimum tensile strength of 77,000 psi or 530.9 megapascal. Due to PTT pipeline design changes in May 1997, the project was short on 42-inch pipes. We the Tasco Manusman joint venture helped PTT and supplied 7,500 meters of 42-inch X65 pipes epoxy coated with 20.52 mm wall thickness. Those pipes were manufactured by Manusman in Germany and arrived in Thailand by the end of February 1998. In the middle of April 1997, we received the Japanese manufactured 42-inch pipes in Ratchaburi from PTT and we double-jointed most of those pipes, meaning that two single pipes were welded together in our so-called double-joint fabrication yard in Ratchaburi. Non-destructive tested by X-ray and after past test results the weld joint was then fusion-bonded epoxy coated. With this double-joint activity, the Tasco Manusman joint venture had a new length of the pipes, which was on average 25 meters long and very good for our pipeline construction work. In fact, it was so effective that we ended up using double joints for approximately 96% of the entire pipeline length. The main purpose of producing these double joints was to minimize the time needed for on-site welding, testing, and coating. As you already know from this video the 42-inch Yadana pipeline passes through widely differing types of terrain, including virgin rainforests, mountainous areas with slopes of up to 40 degrees and different kinds of agricultural areas, and adjacent to roads in the Thai government-owned road corridor. We laid and buried the pipes deep in the earth laid into a sand bed and protected the pipe strings with a layer of sand and soil. The fiber optic cable conduit was laid down as well over the pipes including a red warning tape. Additionally, high force resistant concrete slabs were placed on top of the pipeline along Highway 323. Those pipes located along public roads are classified according to the American Engineering Standard B31.8 as Class 3 piping, with the 42-inch pipes having a wall thickness of 20.52 mm. In lightly populated areas, Class 2 pipes are used, which have a wall thickness of 17.1 mm. The pipeline here in the Sai Yoke district is still located on the west side of the Highway 323, in the road corridor and is covered by green-looking trees, bushes, and grasses. It is an amazing land stretch here at Highway 323 in Kanchanaburi. Some mountain slopes of the hill embankments that we did not cut off are now protected by gabions. A rainwater drainage ditch was installed as well. After this, almost straight with three gentle curves 6.5 km long section, the pipeline reaches its next target and this is the road crossing at pipeline kilometer 87 which is the entrance to the Hellfire Pass. Here this road crossing was done by us using the open cut method and it took some time to obtain permission from the military to do our work. But of course, in the end, it was done and we refurbished the road paving with high quality Tasco asphalt. It's important to note that this location includes a museum dedicated to the prisoners of war. It should be mentioned as well that during the Second World War, Australian, Dutch, British prisoners of war, and civilians were forced by the Japanese to build the Death Railway to connect Bangkok and Rangoon. 
The Yadana gas pipeline intersects with the old Thai Burma Historical Railway six times in this area along Highway 323. The picture shows us the locations and the pipeline kilometer points. Those intersections are all quite close to the Highway 323. So, in this area along Highway 323 is not only the Yadana gas pipeline located but from a long time before the Yadana pipeline was built, there are some traces of the old historical railway visible but of course not so good visible as the Yadana gas pipeline that we had built. After passing the entrance road to Hellfire Pass in Kanchanaburi, the pipeline continues along Highway 323 for approximately 10 kilometers until it reaches Block Valve Station No. 6. Along the way, it passes Pipeline Kilometer 90, where several restaurants have been built close to the pipeline. One should remember that due to the safe characteristics of the gas pipeline system, after it was installed, shallow root crops such as rice, sugar cane, corn, etc. are allowed to grow above the pipeline and paddy stubble or corn cob can be burned. As published in some PTT documents the growing of perennial trees and building of other permanent constructions above the pipeline are not permitted. When you drive along the pipeline, you may occasionally see that some structures were erected quite close to the pipeline, which illustrates the trust that people have in PTT's gas line built by us the tasco Monisman joint venture. After pipeline kilometer 90.5, the pipeline reaches what Putoi Sarma Ki Tam, which is located along the road close to the pipeline right of way. This what is built on a platform carved out of the mountain, making it I would say 6 meters higher than Highway 323. Although the pipeline is exactly in the right location on the government's land, the distance where the pipeline is buried is just 7 meters away from the Watt. Our construction took place in June, July 1997. During the pipeline construction work, there were many work stoppages initiated by the monks. Ultimately, PTT convinced the monks that the pipeline needed to be buried in this location. Additionally, we agreed to repair any damage that might occur to the building. One should remember that the pipeline trench in front of the Watt was around 4 meters deep. However, due to careful planning and work execution by the Tasco Manasman joint venture, the pipeline was successfully built in this specified location. After the Watt, the pipeline follows Highway 323 until it reaches the pipeline kilometer point 93.8. Beyond this point, the Highway 323 features a sharp S curve. At kilometer point 93.8, the pipeline makes a 30 degree turn to the southwest and continues for approximately 100 meters through an agricultural field. It then descends a steep slope for about 110 meters. After reaching the bottom, the pipeline runs for 1.3 kilometers through the agricultural field. At the end of this stretch, it reconnects with Highway 323 and continues southward. In this area, we crossed the former Thai Burma Historical Railway, which resulted in numerous delays and wasted our precious time due to stoppages caused by a railway fanatic. Eventually, I directed our team not to wait any longer and to carry out our work for PTT, at this time a fully government-owned Thai organization that had chosen this pipeline route. We just removed the stone pile carefully by hand before the difficult area was cleared and cut by our dozers. We excavated our pipeline trench and laid the pipeline. Subsequently, we restored the pile of old stones of the historical railway and our pipeline construction was complete. As I said in my video River Kwai Crossings already hardly anyone can go to this point because it is on a steep hill full of shrubs, bushes, and trees, and quite dangerous. As mentioned earlier, after exiting the Valley of Agricultural Fields at Pipeline Kilometer 95.3, the pipeline reattaches to Highway 323 and this is after the huge S-curve of this road. It continued its run inside the Highway Reserve Corridor that gave us a 15-meter wide right-of-way. The 42-inch gas pipeline invisibly navigates its way through the landscape with its many curves and plenty of elevation changes. This challenging landscape with a difficult subsoil structure demanded all our pipeline construction skills to build the pipeline in this Kanchanaburi mountain terrain. Our expertise in pipeline building has made this possible, allowing the Yadana 42-inch pipeline to achieve its proper curve line shape to permit the full gas flow of the transport system. Here in this road stretch as it can be seen in the picture is the corridor area below the highway road level. On its way to block valve station number 6, it passes some small selling shelters, housing, 
and the entrance road of the River Kwai Hotel at Pipeline Kilometer Marker 97. This hotel we used as an accommodation place for some of our construction people that stayed there for longer than one year. For the road crossing in front of the River Kwai Hotel we used the open cut method. When one looks at both sides of Highway 323, we see a chain of some out of the ordinary mountains on the east side, which is where the historical Thai Burma Railway once passed. On the west side around 500 meters away in a valley flows the amazing River Kwai Noi. Landowners or some organized work stoppages forced on us were also common practices in this and other areas. We had during our construction time 250 work stoppages. One could say that this was for each kilometer pipeline on stoppage. I have to point out here that each work stoppage unavoidably affected our following pipeline work activities. This shown list reflects all our major pipeline activities with the pipeline work sequence. The next picture is from April 2024 and shows us a pipeline marker installed by us on Highway 323 at pipeline kilometer 97.1 before the pipeline reaches block valve station number 6. Subsequently one will see a picture of how the place looked during our construction. This bird's view picture shows us this point from above and we can see the block valve station number 6 as well. This picture shows block valve station number 6 at pipeline kilometer 97.2 and the area in February 2024 looked like. The block valve station number 6 fence is almost overgrown with trees and shrubs that we, the Tasco Manasman joint venture, planted some of those at the time in 1998. Considering the highway road level, block valve station number 6 location is a bit lower. The next picture is from December 1997 and shows us the location of block valve station number 6 and our station construction work just started. There are some 42-inch pipes including some hot bends stored. This is followed by some different pictures during the construction time showing us the vent stack, control building, and the block valve. The elevation of the station is around 145 meters. For your information, a 42-inch top entry class 600-pound ball valve weighs around 34 tons without the blue painted actuator. The next picture shows us the finished block valve station number 6 in February 1999. This was after we the Tasco Monisman joint venture had fully commissioned in September of 1998 the pipeline. Since this time the Yadana gas had already been flowing through the 42-inch pipeline. The pipeline is now departing from block valve station number 6 and continues south until it reaches pipeline kilometer 99. At this point it leaves the highway 323 road corridor, after tracking an impressive 29 kilometer stretch along highway 323, the pipeline leaves the road and will not return. Now it changes direction and heads southwest toward the Kwai Noi River. In its new direction, the pipeline will proceed until it reaches the Kwai Noi River at pipeline kilometer 100.5. The 1.5 kilometer long terrain on the river's east side in this area is hilly, with the pipeline descending from an elevation of 160 meters at pipeline kilometer 98.6 to a height of 61 meters at the Kwai Noi River. Due to the subsoil conditions in this area, which include limestone, sinkholes, caverns, and underground streams, the execution of horizontal directional drilling was not feasible. This was the same situation as at the River Kwai Noi crossing at pipeline kilometer 68. Therefore, the river had to be approached directly with our pipeline work, and here on the east and west sides of the river, we faced huge landowner problems. PTT requested us to resolve those landowner issues which we did. On the river's west side, we bought 32,000 square meters of the problem land in order to proceed with the open cut crossing. The pictures show the fence erected by the landowner who used a firearm as well to stop our people. Again, we the Tasco Manasman joint venture helped PTT with this purchase. On the 9th of June, 1998, we successfully lowered in the 140 meter long and 230 ton heavy concrete coated siphon culvert deep into the Kwai Noi River bed at pipeline kilometer 100.5. Subsequently, the entire river embankments area was beautifully reinstated as shown in the two pictures. For additional information see here my video the river Kwai crossings as well. The pipeline is leaving its second river crossing at the Kwai Noi and will continue for approximately 1.5 kilometers in a southwest direction through agricultural fields until it reaches a road. This road, 
named Wong Krachi, leads to the next destination, the scraper block valve station number 7, which is located 21 kilometers away from this point. Since in the year of 2005, PTT added four compressor units at the location of this station it is now called Sai Yoke Compressor Station as well. The entire area on the way to block valve station number 7 is mountainous on the west side of the pipeline route, featuring not only visible rocks at the surface but also a substantial amount of rock deep in the subsoil structure that had to be excavated by us to obtain a 3 to sometimes 4 meter deep pipeline trench. To remove this most of the time extremely hard rock, we used controlled blasting, rock hammers, and a rock trencher, as shown in the picture. Along this let's call it the southeast pipeline direction route, there are numerous water body crossings, with a total of 13 crossings from kilometer point 101 to kilometer 123 at block valve station 7. As the pipeline makes its way to block valve station number 7, I want to give you a brief overview of how the Tasco Monisman joint venture was prepared to construct the Adana gas pipeline. I will also share some interesting pictures of the area along the former right-of-way and of our construction work in the time of 1997 and 1998. During this time most parts of the road where the pipeline is running along were unpaved. At the start of the project, we had planned two main pipeline construction spreads, which were fully operational and had besides manual welding mechanized welding crews. Due to disruptions and delays primarily caused by land issues and PTT's pipeline design changes, we later expanded the number of construction spreads to three. This decision was made based on PTT's request to recover lost time considering the importance of adhering to the project's essential completion dates to allow the pipeline to receive the Myanmar gas. With these three pipeline spreads TMJV's construction workforce exceeded 1900 people at peak. We had a total of 761 pieces of heavy pipeline and civil work construction pipeline equipment and other general vehicles in peak. So, our construction work was definitely huge led by me as project director out of our main office located in the city of Kanchanaburi. The Yadana gas pipeline as built by the Tasco Monisman joint venture continues its safest and most environmentally friendly way to block valve station number 7 which is located in the middle of the pipeline at Sai Yoke Road 6018. Just before the pipeline reached block valve station number 7, we found much more of hard rock in the trench that slowed down our excavation work as reported in the monthly progress report of August 1997. Here are four pictures from our days showing road 6018 and the former pipeline right of way. The pictures include clearly visible kilometer markers and pipeline markers indicating the presence and location of a pipeline. The following picture shows the professional 42 pipe installation by our Tasco Monisman joint venture team for the incoming pipeline section into block valve scraper station number 7. This work was done in December 1997. Here at the station are in and outgoing scraper traps inside the block valve station area that were installed by us. The incoming scraper vessel will catch the pig launched in Ban E Tong and the outgoing scraper vessel will launch the pig that will travel to the Ratchaburi metering station. A scraper is a vessel for the insertion or recovery of pigs, or scrapers, that are used to clean the inside surfaces of pipelines. Intelligent pigs are used as well. Those are data capturing tools that provide readings and information on the health of the pipelines. Such a pig detects and measures corrosion, metal loss, cracks, dents, deformations, etc. This means that after operating the pipeline for more than 26 years PTT is aware of the pipeline's health. Now I am presenting a SCADA screen display for block valve scraper station number 7, which illustrates schematically all the major piping installations completed by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture. I have included in this schematic a picture of the installation of the buried mainline block valve from March 1998. This station display is formatted as a piping and instrumentation diagram. We have installed remote terminal units, RTUs, to monitor pressure both upstream and downstream of the mainline block valve. For this, we installed the connecting cables in conduits as shown in the picture. These RTUs also facilitate the remote operation of all the valves in the scraper piping system by allowing remote control commands to open and close the valves, as well as to indicate their current positions within the piping system for the scrapers and the station bypass. 
Additionally, the SCADA system includes a feature for the remote operation of an emergency pipeline shut down by closing the 42-inch buried mainline block valve installed in the station bypass. In order to see some of the underground installations let me take you back to the past concerning block valve station number 7 and share some construction pictures to provide an impression of how it looked at the end of 1997 and into 1998. The first construction picture depicts the station building, earthworks, and some foundation works. In addition, it shows the incoming 42-inch pipeline arrives at the station with an installed hot bend to reach the ground level. The next pictures show the station bypass with its trench for the 42-inch pipe, featuring the concrete foundation blocks at the bottom of the trench. As it can be seen in the picture the subsoil in the station was also interspersed with rock. The station bypass is the main 42-inch pipe that allows the gas to flow through the station. This group of pictures shows as well the station bypass during our construction work. The next two images highlight some of our construction equipment, along with workers engaged in earth and foundation work. This overview image shows the station building and station lights, providing an overview of the in the subsequent picture, you can see the station at the construction finishing stage with the vent stack, and the bypass connecting to the outgoing pipeline in front of the two scrapers. Here are some more of Block Valve Station 7 pictures as those were shown in our monthly progress report of July 1998. It should be mentioned that in the year 2005, the station bypass that was installed by us required hot tapping to connect the compressor pipes to the Yadana pipeline system. In the picture made in February 2008 is the outgoing scraper unit, and the pipeline is now leaving the station. The installation of the outgoing station pipeline is shown in this subsequently as I think quite an impressive picture with the dust flying around our side booms and people. The pipeline departs from block valve station number 7 and continues towards block valve station number 8, which is located 21 kilometers away at pipeline kilometer 144.2. After exiting block valve scraper station number 7, the pipeline runs along Sai Yoke Road 6018 for approximately 850 meters. It then bends off the road, turning southeast and continuing slightly before heading south for about 1 kilometer. It crosses an asphalt paved road at pipeline kilometer 125.2. Following this distance, the pipeline resumes its original southeast direction along a dirt road for around 9 kilometers. When leaving the road corridors it traverses through agricultural fields. In this area I would say from pipeline kilometer 129 onwards, the land is becoming flatter with less subsurface rock. Before reaching road 3085 one can say that the pipeline is located in a largely undisturbed and quite remote area. Our survey team marked the right of way to ensure that only the approved construction area was cleared. Subsequently, we removed trees, bushes, boulders, and other obstacles mostly with our excavators. Following the clearance, we leveled the terrain to obtain our pipeline right-of-way by using our large bulldozers. For the final level touch-up to make the right-of-way drivable we used our graders. So, we prepared the right-of-way very well and effectively. This included all access roads, allowing our long pipe transport trucks to access the location for delivering the 25-meter long double-jointed pipes. After the delivery, we strung the pipes along the right-of-way, as shown in the picture. Next, we conducted field bending to ensure the double-jointed pipes conform to the land's topography for the pipeline route. We then assembled long pipe strings by welding the double-jointed pipes end-to-end. -end. Our mechanized welding team primarily managed this process, and some of these pipe strings measured up to 1 km in length, as depicted in the accompanying picture. One advantage of using long pipe strings is that it reduces the number of manual tie-in welds required, which subsequently decreases the number of trench manholes needed as well. We cleaned the bottom of the trench and filled it with a 30cm layer of sand, which was then compacted to create a stable sand bed for the 42-inch pipe. Alternatively, we used sandbags to ensure an even stone-free surface at the trench bottom, helping to prevent any damage to the pipe's coating. Following the past radiographic testing and the application of fusion-bonded epoxy joint coating, we lowered the large 42-inch diameter pipeline into the trench. The tasco monisman joint venture lowering in activities were accomplished in two ways. For shorter pipe segments, we utilized heavy-duty pipe belts, as shown in the pictures. 
These heavy-duty nylon webbing tools were hung up in our side boom tractor's hooks, ensuring secure handling of the heavy 42-inch pipe strings. In areas where we had long pipe strings, we utilized pipe-lowering cradles. These cradles that we the Tasco Monisman joint venture employed had crossbeams with a lifting lug for our side boom hook to distribute pulling forces equally over the pipe string, as shown in the picture. They were equipped with polyurethane rollers that could glide over weld seams, preventing any damage to the fusion-bonded epoxy pipe coating. We took additional precautions while backfilling the trench with the 42-inch pipe string resting on the bottom of the trench. For the padding above the pipeline, we used only suitable earth as backfill material. We also made sure to properly cover the high-density polyethylene twin conduit that was buried alongside the pipeline, and we included red warning tape and 61-kilometer concrete slabs as well for safety reasons. Between block valve stations number 7 and number 8, there are six water body crossings. The two largest crossings occur at pipeline kilometer 126.2, where the Lum Sum Jai Water Reservoir is located, and at kilometer 137.4, where the Makrobin River flows. I will start by sharing some of our work pictures of the crossing at the Lum Sum Jai Water Reservoir, which presented significant challenges due to the presence of a lot of hard rock. Here we used the Tasco Monisman Joint Venture Bought Rock Trencher as well. To manage the water flow, we constructed a protective dam and installed a 42-inch water bypass pipe to divert the water from the trench. Water that still footed into the trench was pumped out by us. The picture shows our constructed protection dam and that the 42-inch outgoing pipeline was already installed by us. The next picture shows how the area of water crossing at pipeline kilometer 126.2 is looking now 27 years later. I would like to share a bird's eye view of the water crossing at pipeline kilometer 137.4, highlighting the road bridge and the Yadana 42-inch pipeline, which I have illustrated. The picture, taken in June 1998, partially shows the embankments and the warning sign after we completed the water body crossing and restored the entire area. Shortly after this water crossing, we encountered road 3085. The Tasco Monisman joint venture employed the open cut method for this road crossing. After those crossings, the pipeline runs again for 3 kilometers through agriculture fields and 500 meters along a dirt road to join road 3085 at pipeline kilometer 141. From here on the Yadana pipeline continues its way in the road corridor and runs straight forward into block valve station number 8. On the left side of the road is the military camp Sai Yoke. The picture shows how in July 1997 we the Tasco Monisman joint venture lowered in a pipe string of the 42-inch Yadana gas pipeline in front of the military camp Sai Yoke at Road 3085. I must mention the weather, as it played a significant role in our work. During the heavy rains at the end of September and the beginning of October 1997, we experienced considerable damage to 7,315-meter pipeline. Following this, Typhoon Linda struck on the 4th of November, 1997. The storm caused further flooding and washed out roads, which necessitated major reclamation work in the area of pipeline construction. The total length of the pipeline damaged by Typhoon Linda was 6.315 kilometers. We immediately implemented the necessary repair measures to restore the damaged sections of the pipeline, ensuring that we remained on schedule despite the challenges presented by the project. So, after my rain damage report let me say that roads were somewhat the backbone of the Adana pipeline route. A large part of the pipeline was routed within existing road reserves, which meant that construction working space was sometimes severely restricted by the presence on the road to one side. And the presence of the buildings which are usually to be found close to roads on one side, such as houses, shops, restaurants and the like. Now here on road 3085, the pipeline will reach in short distance block valve station number 8 at pipeline kilometer 144.2. Before I report on block valve station 8, I want to highlight the excellent system quality of the Adana gas pipeline including all its associated components such as equipment and SCADA, which were provided by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture during the project period time of 1997 to 1998. Our TNJV top management and personnel performed exceptionally well, even amidst the prevailing business conditions during the Southeast Asia crisis in 1997 and 1998. 
The pipeline's owner, PTT, should be delighted with the quality of what has been delivered, especially given the cost-effective pricing the Tasco Manasman joint venture gave to PTT. Now I come to block valve station number 8 which is equipped like all the other block valve stations, but I would like to emphasize the beauty of the surrounding mountains. This picture shows me in January 2021 in front of block valve station number 8. The following pictures show the station during its construction and provide an impression of the work carried out by us first of all with the block valve and the associated pipework followed by our civil work with the station building and the telecommunication tower foundation. The elevation of this station is 47 meters. After leaving block valve station number 8, the next destination for the 42-inch Yadana gas pipeline is block valve station number 9, located at pipeline kilometer 167.95 along road 3361, which requires covering a distance of 23.7 kilometers. Within this pipeline stretch, it crosses nine water bodies. The pipeline routing went initially for 2.8 kilometers southeast of block valve station number 8 and we did not encounter any significant obstructions along road number 3445. However, upon reaching pipeline kilometer 147, our pipeline construction encountered many work stoppages at what Sam Praia, a temple placed at the top of a hill. This hill went down until road 3445 and blocked the pipeline right of way. To allow the pipeline right of way to progress, we had to remove a substantial portion of the hill, as the planned pipeline route went directly through it. Our earthwork is illustrated here in the accompanying pictures. The monks at the Wat were very concerned that part of the Wat structure might slide down the hill. This concern led to numerous work stoppages and lengthy discussions that lasted over three months. However, we finally received an agreement to proceed with the hill cutting work in late 1997. The pictures that I'm here presenting show the area before we could begin laying the pipes. These images reflect the substantial amount of earth that needed to be removed so that we could reach the level of the road for our right-of-way work. Once we reached the road level, we prepared the right-of-way and started with our trenching work. We dug the pipeline trench around 3.5 meters deep. All the other pipeline work activities started subsequently according to the pipeline building sequence. One of these activities was tie-in welding in the trench as shown in the picture. In mid-December 1997, we conducted our pipeline reinstatement work. This involved bulk earthworks and structural repairs of existing road conditions, including the soil surface topography where it was possible, watercourses, and culverts. The next picture shows this area of road 3445 along the Wat Sam Praia in Kanchanaburi as it looks now in May of 2024 with a well-visible yellow Yadana gas pipeline marker. I would describe this picture as one with a quite nice and clean look. From the Wat Sam Praia, the pipeline further follows the corridor along the road and turns south just after pipeline kilometer 149. It then resumes its original southeast direction until it reaches road 3229 approximately 300 meters later. At this road point, we performed a crossing using pneumatic hammers which means a trenchless method. The pipe string that we used for the crossing length was around 75 meters long. After crossing the road, the pipeline continues in the same direction for about 200 meters until it arrives at the Lam Sai River. We utilized the open trench cut method for this river crossing. Next, we routed around 350 meters through agriculture fields, passing what Missouri Scarrow and Tam, until we neared pipeline kilometer 151, on road 3085. So, before this point, our pipeline construction was temporarily completed and we were forced to stop our work. Let me also emphasize that we the Tasco Manasman joint venture hired local workers, excavators, and trucks from the area in which we worked. Now I'm reporting here about a huge problem area due to a pipeline blockade. The area along the pipeline route from pipeline kilometer 151 to 152 was heavily contested. Upon closer examining this area in 1997-1998, one can see that it primarily consisted of farmland and a few dilapidated houses. Compared to other areas in Kanchanaburi, this region appeared particularly deserted and somehow not very clean. Here the pipeline route followed road 3085 for around 2 kilometers, where concrete electricity power posts were also present in the road corridor. 
The reason the residents opposed the pipeline construction for almost an entire year could likely be attributed to incitement from outside influences. According to the project director from PTT, NGOs from nearby Kanchanaburi provided financial support to the residents to help prevent the construction of the gas pipeline. However, on 6 March 1998, the relevant Thai authorities decided to put an end to the construction disruption caused by the pipeline blockage. This was after Thailand's prime minister had decided that the building of the pipeline must be continued since the pipeline was essential for the energy supply of Thailand. With significant police and military support, we were directed to start our work in this area. Whereby our work had to be done in a crash program matter. This was a technique used by us that involved adding resources to all pipeline activities with the goal of getting the project back on schedule so that our hydrostatic test could be conducted in this pipeline section on 15 March, 1998. The officials had set up large tents where they could find shade and take their meals because they had to stay there all the time until our construction work was completed. Shortly after starting, our heavy civil work construction equipment was halted when residents, including women and children, positioned themselves in front of the big machinery. They had erected as well a tent on the right of way. On the morning of March 7, 1998, which was a Saturday, more NGOs people arrived. For those people who supported the locals, it seemed like an enjoyable adventure tour focused on creating civil disturbances and causing problems. Later, two of the NGO leaders attempted to negotiate with the appropriate Thai authorities. Unfortunately, these negotiations were unsuccessful and ultimately proved to be fruitless. Hours later, the protest group grew much larger and the situation became more hardline. Cameras men from television stations were filming, and the protesters shouted out loudly stop Yadana. Some of those were telling me, for long go home. I was quiet and only thinking no because I had to build the Yadana gas pipeline. Around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it was very hot and the Thai officials had enough and started to clear the area at pipeline kilometer 152. All the protesters were surrounded by police and army forces. Following the surroundings, they were arrested and transported away in our transport trucks. Subsequently, our heavy dozers and excavators were able to proceed with our work. PTT ordered us to continue the work under all circumstances, day and night without stopping. I instructed our team to comply, and we received reinforcements from other areas of our pipeline construction. We installed the necessary floodlights and worked continuously for five days and nights, ultimately completing this section of the pipeline project. Work actions were done almost overlapping each other as can be seen in the picture here. Tie-in welding was conducted in the trench and at the same time, the backfilling work started already as can be seen in the dust flying at KP 151 to 152. A view to road 3085 after the pipeline was already in the trench and the final backfill work was carried out by us at KP 151 to 152 by using heavy machinery such as a CAT D9 dozer. The pipeline hydrodist preparation at KP 151 to 152 was done as well. Road 3085 with a view from pipeline kilometer 152 towards 151. The section was finished by us as planned with our impressive crash action work. In the next two pictures I took, you can see how the area around pipeline kilometer 151 and 152 on road 3080 in Kanchanaburi appeared 22 years later. It looked quite peaceful, unfortunately, I didn't meet any of the locals that I could ask whether they had any issues with the pipeline. After leaving pipeline kilometer 152, the pipeline runs through agricultural fields, initially heading southeast. It crosses the small river Lam Pao after 600 meters. Shortly afterward, the pipeline crosses road 4056 and continues through the agricultural fields until it reaches road 4055 at pipeline kilometer 155.4. From this point, the pipeline heads south along road 4055, in the road corridor in which power posts are erected as well here visible close to pipeline kilometer sign 157 and they continue along the road. In this picture are again well visible those concrete power posts and the pipeline kilometer sign 158. During our construction of the pipeline, we had to pay a lot of attention to these power posts and many times had to install additional supports to prevent their collapse into our deep pipeline trench. 
Besides the pipeline kilometer signs and warning markers cathodic protection test points are installed. One of those is here in the picture visible behind kilometer sign 159. From here on the 42-inch Yadana pipeline continues in a southerly direction and as shown here passes the red-white pipeline kilometer sign 161. The next picture depicts some concrete plates on the ground bordered by four red and white painted concrete stacks. This is a manhole located at pipeline kilometer 162.134, which was used for pulling the fiber optic cable running along the entire length of the 240-kilometer pipeline, protected by a conduit alongside the pipeline. The next image illustrates the fiber optic cable installation in April 1998. This is where the cable laying continues from pipeline kilometer 162.134, moving towards block valve station number 9. Our SCADA subcontractor, Siemens, carried out this work with our assistance. Then this picture shows pipeline kilometer sign 163, adjacent to road 4055. Further 500 meters downstream at pipeline kilometer 163.5 it crosses the small river, Lam Kung. I must note that during the summer months, the small rivers in the area dry up. However, in the rainy season, the situation changes completely, and these dried up rivulets transform into torrents. At kilometer 164, near what the Pu Rat Bam Rung, the pipeline re-enters the agriculture fields and a white plate announces this direction change into the fields. It passes those fields and reaches pipeline kilometer 164.5 an area that was empty fields at the time of the pipeline construction here in July 1997. Now as can be seen from the pictures this area was developed and the building even very close to the pipeline was erected. The pipeline continues to block valve station number 9. The picture I am presenting here is from the 13th of December, 1997, showing the 42-inch pipeline, installed by us the tasco Monisman joint venture, running through the center of the future station. Next to the pipeline, you can see the black high-density polyethylene twin conduit for the fiber optic cable. A pipe section of the pipeline was later cut out, and an ANSI-class 600-pound, 42-inch ball valve was placed in the middle of the pipe, as depicted in the picture. This valve was then welded in place and rests on a suitable concrete foundation designed to support its weight of 34 tons. The next picture was taken in May 1998 and shows the installation of the vent and bypass piping system. The station building as here shown under construction is as in any other block valve station that includes a guard and control room. The next slide displays block valve station number 9 as it was shown in our monthly progress report in July 1998. Block valve station number 9 has an elevation of 55 meters. The finished station has still after being for 26 years in operation a nice look as can be seen in the pictures and is directly located on road 3361 in Kanchanaburi. Now the Yadana pipeline is leaving block valve station number 9 and its next station target is block valve station number 10 located at pipeline kilometer 192.328 in Ratchaburi which is a distance of 24.375 kilometers. There are several obstacles along the 24 kilometer pipeline route, including four water bodies, a mountain cut, and multiple road crossings. Upon leaving block valve station number 9, the pipeline initially crosses road 3361 and then proceeds straight into agricultural fields, where it runs for approximately 2 kilometers. The first significant obstacle is the Lumpachi Canal, located at pipeline kilometer 170.9. This water body typically has hardly any water flow during the dry season, but it can transform into a raging river during the rainy season. The Lumpachi River winds through the entire agricultural area like a snake. The soil here is mainly sand with some clay, making it quite weakly structured. As a result, we had to install very deep-seated sheet pile walls over the entire trench length during our excavation work to provide trench stability and prevent our trench walls from collapsing. As illustrated in the pictures, our cutting and trench construction work reached depths of approximately 7 meters. The sheet pile walls we installed effectively stabilized the pipeline trench and prevented any collapses. We utilized a dragline excavator, a mechanized excavator with a shovel attached by cables, which allowed us to efficiently dig the trench as it could simply remove large loads of sand. We also utilized pumps for the necessary dewatering of the trench. 
Meanwhile, we fabricated a 128-meter long pipe string and conducted X-ray testing and joint coating. The pipe string was shaped by cold field bending to meet the topography of the Lumpachi water crossing. Following this, we successfully performed a hydro pressure test on the pipe string. Once we achieved the required trench depth, we lowered the 128 meter long culvert pipe string into position at the bottom of the trench. To provide the right setting of the siphon culvert on the excavated trench bottom that was 3.8 meters below the riverbed, we filled the pipe siphon culvert with water. The crossing width of the riverbed itself was 42 meters. Some rock shield was installed by us to protect the pipe coating. Finally, we backfilled the trench with the same material we had excavated, completed the reinstatement work, and installed the kilometer sign 171. After leaving the Lumpachi River, the pipeline runs approximately 700 meters through agricultural fields before bonding with Road 3209. The picture here shows the 42-inch in diameter fusion-bounded epoxy-coated pipeline coming out of the agriculture field. From there, the pipeline continues along the road corridor in a southeasterly direction but changes shortly afterward its direction to go more east, covering a total distance of 9 kilometers starting from pipeline kilometer 171.8 to pipeline kilometer 180. This shown picture shows the pipeline already 200 meters along the road corridor and is quite interesting as it marks the point where the pipeline makes a large curve and bends more eastwards following the road and shows our pipelining activities including tie-in welding are taking place. The double joint pipe hauling work from our Rachaburi double joint yard located at Highway 4 went ahead as well here on road 3209 with the transport of 25 meter long pipes and we loaded three of those on each truck. Our determination to build a good quality pipeline on time for PTT continued with the normal pipeline activities such as cold field bending as shown here in the picture. The next picture depicts our trenching work at pipeline kilometer 173. In this area, we encounter trench-friendly ground that was almost free of rock. We sloped the edges of the trench to prevent any potential collapse of the trench walls. Where we had some rock in the trench, we used our excavators equipped with rock hammers to remove the rock as it can be seen in the picture. As usual, we proceeded with lowering the pipe strings into the trench, followed by the step-by-step -step backfilling process. During these activities, we also installed the fiber optic cable conduit and the red warning tape. In the end, we graded the right-of-way to align with the level of the road. In the following pictures, I will briefly discuss the fiber optic cable installation that took place at a later stage. The image shows a typical work crew along with the equipment used for this task. The compressed air necessary for blowing the cable into the conduit, aided by a sponge was generated by a diesel-driven compressor. Notably for easy transportation moves, the air compressor was mounted on the truck as in the picture well visible. The fusion splicing machine shown here allowed us to connect the fiber optic cable together. Let's return to the 42-inch Yadana pipe laying and discuss one of the many problem areas that we faced. At pipeline kilometer 178.1, directly across from what Lang Ka Jai, a large mountain obstructed the right-of-way for the pipeline, which was situated adjacent to the road over a length of around 150 meters with a height of approximately 20 meters. As shown in the accompanying pictures, we needed to remove a part of this mountain to align the pipeline right-of-way with the level of road 3209. This mountain task required significant effort and time from our excavators and dump trucks, which were responsible for transporting the excavated earth away from the site. It is almost needless to say that here our normal pipeline activities got disrupted. The picture presented here provides a good view of the mountain cut with the pipe string laying in the road corridor. Following the mountain cutting work, we resumed our usual pipeline activities in this area, laying down the remaining pipe pieces into the trench and we welded those pipes end by end together. Passing this mountain in a short distance exactly at pipeline kilometer 177, the province of Kanchanaburi ends and Rachaburi starts. Here at this point is the time to say goodbye to Kanchanaburi and welcome to Rachaburi. The pipeline continued for 1.9 kilometers along the road corridor until it reached the intersection with road 3274. At this point at pipeline kilometer 180, the pipeline had to cross road 3274. For this road crossing, we employed the trenchless road crossing method using our pneumatic hammer. 
Afterward, the pipeline extends for approximately 4.7 kilometers through agricultural fields, heading in a southeast direction until it reaches pipeline kilometer 184.7 to meet the road. Of course, here in the field was our pipeline work much easier than on the roads. From that point, it follows the road for 3.3 kilometers, running within the road corridor, and changes direction from pipeline kilometer 185.9 onwards to the south. At pipeline kilometer 186.5, we needed to cross a water canal. As shown in the picture, we used sheet piling to complete this water crossing. The sheet piling provided stability for the pipeline trench despite the water flow. This work was carried out in December 1997. The next water crossing of the Canal Jing was at pipeline kilometer 187.5. As shown in the picture, we used sheet piling to facilitate our pipeline work. The image clearly illustrates our pipe string lowering activity, which was performed using our side booms. Subsequently, at pipeline kilometer 188, the pipeline diverts for only around 600 meters through agricultural fields before returning to follow the road once again. The pipeline follows this route in the road corridor for around 4 kilometers until it reaches block valve station number 10 at pipeline kilometer 192.328. This image was made of our construction work on the way to block valve station number 10 and shows a long pipe string lying in the road corridor at pipeline kilometer 190, where a tie-in weld is being made outside the trench. On the 11th of July, 1997 in front of what would become block valve station number 10, two pictures offer an almost historical view of that time and illustrate the amount of work that was to be done by us. The next picture shows the pipeline at block valve station number 10 where the valve has to be installed by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture. Subsequently, the pictures show that the pipeline has already been cut, and three bar T's and a 42-inch ball valve have been installed. Those T's feature a 12-inch outlet pipe branch. Two of these branches are designated for the valve bypass pipes, which help equalize pressure, while the third branch is intended for the vent pipe. Here is a beautiful picture of all the pipes, as discussed before, showing five ball valves, each 12 inches in diameter, including blind flanges on the pipe branch connections installed. The picture was of course taken before the station earth backfilling work was done. I would like to continue to share some interesting pictures from the construction of block valve station number 10, taken in 1997 and 1998. After completion of the installation work of the 34-ton ball valve along with the necessary piping, it was time for the station backfill work. As shown in the pictures, the station required a significant amount of backfill material. It was followed by the construction of the station building which included a control and a guard room of course equipped with all the required utilities and controller and SCADA units as described by me for block valve station number 5. This included the vent stack and the station telecommunication tower. At the end of our work, we had a nice looking block valve station. Even during our days, the station looks impressive nice, and clean as the picture shows me, Werner Schweppes at block valve station number 10 on the 10th of November, 2020. Adjacent to block valve station number 10, a new gas mixing station is now operational. This station is designed to mix natural gas from the east with western gas supplies. To connect the piping of PTT's new gas mixing station, PTT needed to hot tap into the old Yadana gas pipeline which was constructed by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture. When building a new pipeline, a straight line as one knows would be the shortest distance between two points. Unfortunately, the Yadana pipeline does not run in a straight line, so as I have explained before, we had many changes in direction that we had to overcome with the pipe field bends and sometimes even factory-made hot bends. For the bending of pipes in the field, we had three bending machines on the project. The factory-made hot bends we have procured from the Monisman large pipe mill in Germany. The route of the Yadana pipeline with its curves here between two block valve stations, can be seen on the map here. The distance between block valve station number 10 and block valve station number 11 is 13.583 kilometers, with block valve station number 11 situated at pipeline kilometer 205.9. During this 13.5 km stretch, the 42-inch pipeline crosses seven roads and several water obstacles in the fields and adjacent road areas, as illustrated in the accompanying picture. 
After leaving block valve station number 10 at pipeline kilometer 192.3, the pipeline runs approximately 1 kilometer to the south, following the road corridor. After this distance, it changes direction slightly to the southeast, crossing the road, and runs for 200 meters through agricultural fields until it connects to road number 3274 at kilometer 193.4. At this point, marked here in the picture as pipeline kilometer 193.4, the pipeline changes direction slightly more to the east and continues for around 5.6 kilometers. Following the corridor of road 3274 together with the electric power line as shown in the picture here with kilometer marker 195 until it reaches the pipeline kilometer marker 200.6. At this point, the route heads northeast through agricultural fields for 2 kilometers until pipeline kilometer 202.6. From here it changes its direction to the east for 500 meters until it reaches road number 3087. Now at this point at pipeline kilometer 203.4, the pipeline one can say almost typically follows the road corridor beneath the power lines for approximately 2 kilometers in the northeast direction, then makes quite a sharp turn to the east before pipeline kilometer 204 and continues until pipeline kilometer 205.5. From this point, the route turns to the northeast and continues straight for approximately 400 meters until reaching Block Valve Station 11. The elevation of Block Valve Station 11 is 75 meters. This station is equipped similarly to other Block Valve stations along the Yadana gas pipeline. I visited the station on the 11th of January, 2019, as shown in the accompanying picture and I spoke to the guard at the station, and when I inquired about its status, he informed me that the station was operating well and without any issues. This picture, taken on the 14th of March, 1998, shows the already reinstated outgoing 42-inch Yadana gas pipeline at block valve station number 11. In the middle of the picture, you can see the kilometer sign in red and white showing the number 206, along with the yellow pipeline warning signs installed by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture. At this time, the important hydrostatic test of this pipeline section was already successfully performed on the 24th of January, 1998. The pipeline test pressure was high and exceeded 150 bar to ensure that we had built a good pipeline. From here the pipeline is leaving block valve station number 11 and is on its way to block valve station number 12, which is located at pipeline kilometer 218.7, a distance of approximately 12.8 kilometers. Initially, the pipeline travels straight east through agricultural fields. Here is an area picture from January 1998 of the field where in the upper part of the picture pipeline kilometer marker 207 is. After reaching kilometer marker 207 which is a distance of around 1.1 kilometers away from block valve station number 11, the pipeline makes let me say a 30 degree turn to the southeast. In this new direction, the pipeline runs for about 2 kilometers until it joins road 3087 at pipeline kilometer marker 209. From here the pipeline kilometer 209, on road 3087 onwards, the pipeline route bends more to the southeast whereby the pipeline runs along the road corridor that accommodates many electrical power poles as well. The right of way here was very limited to a width I would say of around 6 to 10 meters, so we had to use a portion of the road for the pipeline construction. This section of the pipeline stretches for almost 7.7 .7 kilometers in distance to pipeline kilometer 216.7 and is mostly straightforward, with numerous horizontal up and down movements that lead to many sacks and overbends. Additionally, as mentioned before we faced here big challenges due to the hundreds of power poles that were carrying electricity to the nearby living residents and villages. We needed to secure many of these poles to prevent them from collapsing. As the pictures show here at pipeline kilometer 209, there was a particularly challenging area due to several obstacles. The right of way was only 6 meters wide, and we had to navigate around electrical power posts, water bodies, water supply lines, and nearby buildings. In this area, we employed sheet piling after completing the right-of-way grading, which was our second work step. We then used our backhoes to excavate a trench that was approximately 4 meters deep. In the many other areas where we used sheet piling, the trench wall was of course vertical by itself and the trench wall withstood heavy outside forces which meant that our heavy construction equipment with the load of the pipes could operate there. 
When we chose not to use sheet piling, we took great care to keep the trench walls as vertical as possible in order to minimize the amount of excavated earth on the right of way and for security reasons of the surrounding installations. However, a slope was necessary to prevent the trench walls from collapsing, as illustrated here in the picture showing our side booms operating in a tie-in activity from Road 3087. Due to the pipeline route in the land topography of Road 3087, the pipeline trench was in between roads and had to cross those. Some of the road crossings were built by using the trenchless method mostly here by thrust boring and some were done by open cuts. Certain areas included water body crossings as well and in such areas, we were dealing mostly with a softer earth so we used sheet piling and sometimes concrete reinforcement for stabilization as shown in the picture. On those crossings, the trench was sometimes around 5 meters deep. We had here between block valve station number 11 and 12 more than 30 road and several water body crossings on the way to block valve station 12. The excavated material needed to be either graded on the right of way or piled at a part of the road. In certain instances, we transported the excess earth material away using dump trucks. All pipe field bending was carried out outside the right of way, in designated work areas. The 42 inch pipes were sometimes laid directly into the trench and we conducted our welding activities down in the trench as well. When space allowed, we also used our mechanized mainline welding spread which included a significant amount of equipment and manpower. The backfilling activities that followed were consistent with those in other pipeline areas. We ensured that good quality materials, such as selected sand for bedding and padding were used. Our dump trucks supplied those sand materials, and our safety staff coordinated the traffic during the unloading of the dump trucks. At Road 3087, we also installed carefully concrete slabs to cover the entire buried pipeline area. Subsequently, the Tasco Monisman joint venture team completed the final reinstatement work, leaving the area on Road 3087 looking very well and clean. From pipeline kilometer 216.9, the pipeline departs from Road 3087 and moves in a northward direction, traveling approximately 1 kilometer through agricultural fields until it reaches the road corridor leading to block valve station number 12. The pipeline now follows the road corridor for 1.8 kilometers until it arrives at block valve station number 12. The picture shows here the pipeline laying in a clean trench with a bend on the way to block valve station 12. On the left side is the twin conduit for the fiber optic cable good visible. Block valve station number 12 located at pipeline kilometer 218.7 is situated at an elevation of 7 meters and has a large plot size. The picture depicts block valve station 12 from February 1999, where gas had been flowing through the pipeline for four months that we the Tasco Monisman joint venture have built. The following pictures showcase the mainline block valve actuator and the associated piping with the vent stack, which we installed at the end of 1997 and the first half of 1998. It also shows the gas 24-inch outlet piping with a ball valve sitting in front of the pipe support. Our land work commenced with site preparation that involved backfilling of earth materials on the 23rd of July, 1997. This was followed by the 42-inch pipeline laying on the 8th of August, 1997. The picture here shows the still uncut pipeline running through block valve station number 12. The actual block valve installation took place on the 7th of January, 1998. The hydrostatic testing for the station was within test section 17 of the pipeline and was completed on the 25th of January, 1998. After this, we proceeded with the civil construction activities such as Foundation Works rainwater drainage system and the erection of the station building. This picture shows the building of the telecommunication tower foundation with its form and reinforcement steel work. Good visible are the anchor bolts as well. This was followed by the installation of structural steel, which included fences, lighting poles, and the telecommunication tower erection. Next, we focused on our mechanical work, which involved the installation of pressure piping for the station, as well as the necessary electrical and instrumentation installations followed by functional testing. Our final task was painting work and the clearing of the station. This station is unique compared to standard block valve stations along the Yadana pipeline, as it features a pipe outlet connected to what I believe is a 24-inch diameter pipeline. 
gas from block valve station number 12 was transported to the Hin Kong Electrical Power Plant in Ratchaburi. I'm not certain if this pipeline connection still exists. Now the pipeline leaves station 12 as can be seen here in the picture from pipeline kilometer 219 and its next destination is the operation maintenance center in Ratchaburi located at Highway 4. The distance here between the two stations is 14.5 kilometers. On this 14.5 kilometer long way, the pipeline had to pass some major obstacles. The first obstacle came at pipeline kilometer 220.2. Here the pipeline passes an agriculture canal combined with the rural road 4123. To overcome this big obstacle, we use thrust boring which is also a trenchless crossing method. The crossing pipe length was here about 80 meters and the two pits from which the work was conducted were 6 meters deep. After this crossing from pipeline kilometer 220.2, the pipeline goes for around 1.8 kilometers straight forward to agricultural rice fields until it hits the canal crossing at pipeline kilometer 221.3. For this 50 meter long agriculture water canal crossing, we use the trenchless thrust boring method again. Here follows an air view of the pipeline route between pipeline kilometer 222 and 227. Between pipeline kilometers 220.5 and 226.5, the pipeline runs inside water ditches used for agricultural purposes. The installation of the pipeline along this approximately 6 km waterways, with some interruptions through agriculture fields was quite different from our standard pipeline construction. The picture presented here shows us the passing of our side boom tractors during the lowering and work in an agriculture field between the aforementioned water canals. And as it is well visible, we had here mud and water as well. Now it looks like shown in this picture. In the waterway, we had to utilize deep sheet piling extensively, as the work in these water ditches was similar to working in a swamp, although, in Ratchaburi, access to the construction site was relatively easier due to some existing dirt roads. However, the limited space available for our heavy construction machinery caused significant challenges and problems. Additionally, we faced the issue of muddy excavated earth, which we had to remove from the waterways to build our pipe trench. The trench had depths of almost 4 meters and we needed long arm excavators to make the trench building possible. We had to spread the muddy earth onto the surrounding access ways, which meant that our pipeline crews and construction equipment were factually standing in the mud. The following picture shows the preparation of a diesel driven water pump by us in this area. Clear visible is the water in the ditch which we had to pump out. Due to the limited space available, all our pipe bending operations were conducted outside of the restricted waterway area. Welding took mostly place outside the trench due to the presence of water in the ditch. We welded together short pipe strings, and before lowering in of those pipe strings we pumped the water in the manhole area out of the trench. Subsequently, our tie-in crew aligned the two pipe strings together, and the tie-in welding was performed by our qualified welders. The next picture illustrates how we brought the X-ray equipment into the trench. We utilized our excavator to load both personnel and equipment into the shuffle and move them down. This is followed by the picture showing the X-ray testing was done. The brown-red earth picture shows how some of the area looked in the middle of March 1998. This is followed by a picture of how the area looks during our days. Starting from pipeline kilometer 226.5, the pipeline moves now in the east direction through agricultural fields and crosses some roads and agriculture water canals before reaching the huge Meiklong River. But before reaching the big river we carried out a water canal crossing at pipeline kilometer 227 and used here the trenchless crossing method. At the Meiklong River, we conducted a horizontal directional drilling crossing, using a 600 meter long pipe string. For more details, please check out my video on the River Kwai crossing which includes the Meiklong River. After exiting the river, the pipeline reaches the next crossing, which is a railway at the pipeline kilometer 229.6. We constructed this railway crossing using a 56-inch casing pipe to install the 42-inch Yudana pipeline. For this crossing, we employed the trenchless crossing method known as pneumatic ramming. The crossing was successfully completed in December 1997.
Subsequently, the pipeline was threaded through the protective casing pipe, and the vent pipes and cathodic protection cables for the 56-inch casing pipe were connected by us. After leaving the railway crossing, the pipeline continues eastward, crossing several more roads, waterways, and agricultural fields. The next picture illustrates the tasco monisman joint venture's process of lowering in a lengthy pipe string. Our heavy side boom tractors use cradles for this work. Now the large diameter 42-inch pipeline reaches highway number 4 at pipeline kilometer 233. Of course, we had to cross highway number 4 and we used here as well the pneumatic pipe rammer for a pipe crossing length of around 100 meters. The pipe rammer pushed the pipe in one continuous run through the clay soil underneath highway number 4 having a material cover of more than 3 meters on the top of the pipe whereby the traffic was not disturbed by our work. The soil was during the pipe ramming let me say accurately swallowed up by the 42 inch pipe. Later the spoil was pushed out like a sausage at the pipe crossing end by using compressed air and some water. The work was done by us in May 1997. The 42 inch pipeline went after the Highway 4 road crossing by making an almost 90 degree curve to the south into the metering station which is located at pipeline kilometer 233.2. We could only start with our civil work activities namely the earthworks backfilling work on the metering station on the 2nd of August, 1997 and we the Tasco monisman joint venture were in a hurry to get the work for PTT done. Before I proceed with the meter station, I would like to take a moment to highlight two others of our important work locations related to the Adana pipeline project. One of these was our double joint yard which was established diagonally opposite the meter station on highway number 4 in the direction of Ratchaburi. To minimize field welding, RT testing in the field, and FBE field joint coating, the Tasco monisman joint venture decided to use double joints on the Yadana project. Our double jointing yard was completed at the beginning of April 1997 and began production on the 12th of April, 1997, with the welding of 42-inch pipes. Double jointing is a process in which two individual pipes are welded together, tested, and then joint coated. By the end of August 1997, when our field factory was closed in Ratchaburi, a total number of 8,808 high-quality welds on 42-inch double-jointed pipes were produced by us. The double joints were transported daily from Ratchaburi to the designated construction site. Transporting the 42-inch pipe double joints, which measured between 23 and 26 meters in length and weighed between 12.3 and 14 tons, was quite challenging. As a result, only our specially trained drivers operated these very long trucks. The other work location was our prefabrication yard in Ratchaburi. So, we the Tasco monisman joint venture, established at the beginning of the project a prefabrication yard in Ratchaburi, which included a storage area and a construction equipment maintenance shop. This temporary job site allowed us to prefabricate piping spools and steel structures for the Yadana stations, among other tasks needed for a major pipeline project. I want to emphasize that we the Tasco monisman joint venture were very knowledgeable and skilled with our staff in operating our prefabrication shop. The main advantages of having a prefabrication yard included greater independence from weather conditions, flexibility in working hours, and factory-like working conditions. This setup enabled us to mass produce items for installation in the pipeline facilities. Our prefabrication yard was equipped with cutting tools, welding facilities, and all the necessary equipment for steelwork. Piping and structural prefabrication were carried out to ensure an optimal balance between ease of handling and minimizing the number of field welds. Additionally, sandblasting and painting activities were conducted in our prefabrication yard. In our Ratchaburi prefabrication yard welder and welding procedure qualifications according to API 1104, welding of pipelines and related facilities, were also conducted. The total number of welding procedure qualifications was 25 and the total number of welders qualifications was 174 which included gas metal arc welding, submerged arc welding and shielded metal arc welding methods that were used. Welding on the pipeline and all associated facilities was performed by our qualified welders only. Now, I would like to show and explain the operations and maintenance center, which is the heart of the Adana gas pipeline system that entire complex we have built from nothing. 
This large station compound constructed by us the Tasco Manasman Joint Venture is located on Highway 4 in Ratchaburi and covers around 78,000 square meters or in Thai common measurements 49 Rai. I previously mentioned our hurry in building this station, this was because we did not receive the land for the station as it was planned, we received the land three and a half months later namely on the 9th of August, 1997, and therefore we had a lot of time pressure on our shoulders to complete the work. After the stripping topsoil of the land, we conducted sand filling and installed 196,000 meters of wick drainage. The land required a backfill height with a selected earth of 3 meters. That resulted in a volume of 234,000 cubic meters of earth that needed to be transported to this land. The number of dump truckloads doing the transport was around 23,000 trucks and this took almost until the middle of January 1998 before the entire area of the operations and maintenance center was completed. In parallel to the earth filling work, we compacted the back filled area. Subsequently, the piling work was done by us, which involved driving around 1,000 precasted tubular concrete piles into the ground using impact hammers and was completed by the end of January 1998. Here one can see the operations and maintenance center during our days. In addition, I display a schematic of the station reflecting the details of the buildings and structures. This schematic was shown in our Let Me Say at the Project Time almost famous monthly progress reports. Now I will show some construction pictures from our work done to create this building complex. So, we built a main workshop including a power generating station firefighting garage and firefighting system, and the workshop building included a large warehouse. Further, we constructed a concrete water storage tank including a sewage and water treatment system, and drilled a water well. We erected a water supply pump house. The picture shows installed pumps, piping, and all accessories on the 30th of June, 1998. We assembled an elevated water tank with its structure. The water tank had a nice PTT logo painted on the top as can be seen in the picture. We built an entrance gate guard house with a fire fighting equipment area. We installed a huge PTT entry sign with the PTT logo made from grey black granite. We built a spirit house on the south side of the station entrance. We constructed two car parking sheds so that PTT's employees' cars would not overheat in the sometimes very hot Ratchaburi sunshine. We built a standby operator's housing and a restaurant to allow the station personnel to live close to their work. PTT's office was built by us as well and in February of 1999, I visited the NICE office to meet Mr. Anoy at the time PTT's Yadana Pipeline Operation Manager. We provided nice landscaping for the entire station area to give it a green look and we built all the required roads including the necessary rainwater drainage system and the street lightning. As one can see from those pictures with the number and size of buildings including the station's entire infrastructure there was a lot of work to be done in, I would say one year by us the Tasco Manasman joint venture. It is almost needless to say that the building work on the large operations and maintenance center was in full swing by the beginning of December 1997. This momentum continued far into 1998 until the completion of the entire facility. This of course applied as well to the important station control room building that can be seen here in two different construction stages. Regarding the pipeline, I have just to say that the pipeline approaches the station as shown in the air view picture coming from the east side of the highway number 4 crossing. Looking back on our work on this incoming pipeline we did the work twice due to a revised meter station location. We had the 42-inch Yadana pipeline laid already earlier and it needed to be relocated. This work took place during heavy rainfalls and was a mud disaster in which we worked as it is shown in the accompanying picture. However, we the Tasco Manasman joint venture managed this challenge very well. This picture shown here was taken by me on the 9th of February, 1999 and provides a view of our completed station work from highway number 4 with the pipeline coming into the station going above ground, and connecting to the receiving scraper vessel. The scraper vessel as shown in this air view picture receives here the pig coming from the 110 km far away block valve station number 7 located in Sai Yoke. Now, the following pictures here show our work in different construction stages of this station area with the incoming pipeline and the scraper unit from March until September 1998. I think one will obtain a good impression of what it looked like during our construction and finishing time with assembling, 
welding work, and later the commissioning in 1998. Following those please let me say historical Yadana gas pipeline pictures I will present now the fundamental functions of the Ratchaburi gas metering station. The pipeline gas metering station was designed by PTT's consultant Nova Gas OGP and built by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture. Here at the Ratchaburi meter station, a simultaneous and continuous analysis of the quality, as well as quantity of the natural gas arriving from block valve station number one from Banitong, takes place. To achieve this, we procured all the mechanical, electrical, and instrumentation equipment, and other materials for the entire project and this included of course the meter station. The SCADA system was a part of this as well as I have mentioned before. We had subcontracted Siemens to engineer and produce this tailor-made Yadana gas pipeline control system. Now I will explain briefly the gas flow through the major equipment installed by us in the meter station. Besides this, I show some of our old construction pictures. I start at the beginning with the two big gas filters installed by us which are shown here in the schematic diagram. The gas reaches those filters, via a branch pipe connection coming directly from the 42-inch Yadana pipeline. Those gas filter vessels were installed by us upstream of the meter which means in front of the meter shelter. With this layout, the gas is directly transferred from the pipeline into the two gas filters that are shown here in the pictures made during the construction and in September 1998. Those filters remove any entrained liquids and solids from the gas stream and provide therefore a clean gas. After filtration, the gas flows to the meter runs, where a meter measures both the volume and mass flow of the natural gas. The three pictures shown here depict some of the installation work of the meter system in March of 1998. This gas measurement is used for fiscal purposes based on specific calculations. A gas chromatograph is used in here in the meter station to determine the gas composition for purposes of calculating the gas gross heating value. So, the quantity and quality of the gas supplied to the EGUT station, or as it is named now the Ratchaburi power station, is exactly known. Next, the gas moves to the pressure reduction system, which regulates the supply pressure to the Ratchaburi power plant at a specified flow value. Here I show two pictures of our installation work on the shelter and piping of the system made in March and April 1998. After the pressure is reduced, the gas passes the odorant injection. The gas becomes odorized by adding small amounts of liquid odorant into the moving gas. So, this system injects a chemical into the gas to give it a rotten egg smell, allowing for safety detection. All the operational pipeline functions are controlled in the metering station control building by the SCADA network system. This system beyond other things provides information on gas pressures, temperatures, and flow rates and it can also detect the locations and functions of equipment, as well as alarm systems. Outside the building is the 30-meter high telecommunication tower installed. I should mention as well that the hydrostatic testing completion of the station was independent of the pipeline on the 21st of May, 1998 followed later by a nitrogen purging and another tightness check. Subsequently, the functional testing of the equipment installed was performed. In summary, I can say that all the equipment delivered and installed by us at the Ratchaburi meter station filters, meters, and regulates the natural gas before it is delivered to the Ratchaburi power plant, and this equipment installed by us the Tasco Monisman joint venture meets all the requirements of good workmanship. When repairs became necessary, they were all carried out by us promptly under the guarantee work coordinated by the Tasco Monisman joint venture office located in the Tipco Tower in Bangkok. The operations and maintenance center built by us in 1998 is PTT's home of the Region 5 Pipeline Operation Center. This station was subject to many expansions that include the start inside the station of the 30-inch Ratchaburi Wang Noi gas pipeline. Coming back to the Yadana gas pipeline run. As shown in the picture, the outgoing 42-inch gas pipeline is connected to a launching scraper unit, allowing cleaning and intelligent pigs to be sent approximately 6 kilometers far away from EGUT scraper station. This is also visible in the here shown pipeline schematic diagram. The pipeline goes to the east to meet its final destination the EGUT receiving scraper station. This scraper station is directly located on the west side of the Ratchaburi power plant and is the transfer point for the gas. For the 6-kilometer-long pipeline stretch, 
I have to point out that we started our pipeline work here at pipeline kilometer 238 with our right-of-way preparation by the middle of March 1997. We, with our Tasco Manasman Joint Venture Pipeline Civil Crew No. 1, constructed the right-of-way here with a width of 20 meters in a good manner. I would like to emphasize that we could not start our work as planned at the end of the pipeline at point KP 238.7 because the precise location of the EGET scraper receiver station was not known to PTT yet. Here in the picture, one can see some of the land where somewhere the EGET station was located later. The 42-inch white pipes visible on the horizon were around one year later installed by us after we knew the location of the station. So, it took until the 1st of December, 1997, before the land of the EGET scraper station was made available to us and we could do our work. Going back to April 1997 I have to say that our client PTT changed the pipeline diameter from 36 to 42 inches for this 6-kilometer stretch from the meter station to the EGET scraper station which is the end of the pipeline. Of course, based on this change our pipeline activities were impacted and started with some delays. Nevertheless, we started the pipe transport with our 25-meter-long double-jointed pipes by our trucks directly onto the right-of-way. Upon arrival at their location, the long pipes were unloaded by us and correctly strung on sandbags on the right-of-way. Our pipe field bending was carried out at our pipe double-joint storage yard in Ratchaburi at Highway 4 and the bends were transported to the right-of-way. At the end of April 1997, our main welding spread one started here with mechanized pipeline welding. Of course, I also have to say here that when you start the construction of a new pipeline project, the respective working crews first have to find their right work rhythm, which takes some days. The mechanized welding spread is hereby the most difficult one to start up. Following the welding we did our radiographic weld testing and fusion bonded epoxy weld joint coating. In parallel to all this work our trench excavation was conducted and as can be seen in the picture we used an excavator with a large V-shaped ditching trench bucket. To obtain a long pipe string for lowering and we welded several pipe strings on the right of way together, X-ray tested and FBE coated the welds. Now our side booms tractors had to come into lowering in action. It was the 12th of May, 1997 when this was happening and all preparation work for the lowering in of the first long pipe string was done. The lowering in of the pipe strings can be seen in the picture. During the lowering in activity, the pipe coating was tested as well. So, we started with all pipeline activities and marched with our crews in the direction of Highway 4 and stopped around 700 meters before. Here I have to say that it is always a blessing for a project manager when such a large construction site has started. And all the equipment that got temporarily imported by us was now finally working. For our tie-in welding in the trench, we excavated a suitable bell hole into the ground as seen in the picture. We used our experienced personnel to align the two pipe strings in the trench together and welded those with our qualified pipeline welders. Subsequently as usual the radiographic testing and the fusion bonded epoxy coating was done of course as well in the trench. In certain by our engineering department specified areas cathodic protection test points were installed as shown in the picture. After we knew in December 1997 the location of the EGET station we completed all the remaining pipeline works by using our manual welding spread going forward to the EGET station until we reached the station. In the area of the meter station, we had to cross six water bodies in a short distance of around 1,000 meters. These water bodies are located between the pipeline kilometers 233.6 and 234.6. Out of these six crossings are four water ponds and two rivers. Concerning the water pounds, we pumped those empty and conducted our pipeline installation work subsequently by using sheet piling. For the two rivers, we blocked those and diverted the water flow. Subsequently, we conducted all our pipeline activities including the hydro test and connected the outgoing pipeline to the meter station scraper vessel. Regarding the EGET scraper station, I am showing here an overview schematic of the station layout and equipment, including the piping. We started our construction immediately after we got the station site by surveying, defining, and staking the station limits of the fence boundary. The station has a size of 60 by 30 meters. Those initial work steps were followed by the stripping of the entire site which included clearance and backfilling work with 3 meters of earth including compacting the material. 
The next picture shows that the compacted backfill work of the EGUT scraper station was completed on the 7th of February, 1998 by us. Clear to see the stacking out of the locations for the equipment to be installed. We installed the incoming 42-inch pipeline and used for this a 5D hot bend to allow the pipeline to enter the station at a short distance. The hot bend can be seen in the picture with its green color FBE coating. In addition, we included a monolithic insulation joint that can be seen in the picture with its black color. This is followed by the barred T and the 42-inch white colored isolation ball valve with its blue gas actuator in front of the scraper unit. We installed the incoming scraper receiver vessel with proper alignment and positioning to ensure the accurate receipt of the pig. A drawing of the scraper vessel that we the Tasco Monosman joint venture procured as well can be seen here. The next picture shows the scraper with its quick opening closure of the 48-inch barrel. The door is equipped with an interlocked locking device to prevent all possibilities of opening the door when the barrel is still under internal pressure. The installed jib crane that is used for loading and unloading the pigs can be seen as well. Behind the jib crane, one can see that the piling work was still being conducted by us. Our work was in parallel conducted by the piping foundation casting for the various piping foundations as it can be seen in the picture. We installed the blowdown line and connected it to the blowdown stack. The structural steel for the blowdown stack we had already prefabricated in our Ratchaburi yard. Furthermore, we built the foundations for the three 36-inch gas transfer valves to the Ratchaburi power station including their 42-inch pipe header and all other piping and the ball valves with gas actuators as shown in the picture. We built the small station control room including its utilities and instrumentation for connection to the SCADA system. We carried out the coating and painting in the entire station. We installed all the station electrical and instrument materials including RTUs for the SCADA. The important caliper survey from the metering to EGUT scraper station the 6-kilometer survey was carried out from the 25th to the 26th of June, 1998. Pipeline kilometer markers and warning signs were installed by us as can be seen in the pictures. Here is after almost 240 kilometers the end of the 42-inch Yadana gas pipeline and the gas becomes electricity. On the 21st of September, 1998, the start of the Yadana pipeline system operation was achieved and the gas was flowing. Subsequently, on the 23rd of September, 1998, PTT agreed to a 101-day time extension for delays and disruptions that occurred during the project time and were out of the Tasco Monisman joint ventures control. The project was closed out on the 21st of August, 2000 with the final project payment from PTT to us the Tasco Monisman joint venture. This documentation was made in memory of our work of building the Yadana gas pipeline for PTT in Thailand in the years of 1997 to 1998. Werner Schweppes, former Tasco Monisman Joint Venture Project Director.